Many thanks to Bluetti for sponsoring this week's video. I think it's fair to say that there's a bit of confusion surrounding in-camera image stabilisation and whether or not it's best left switched on during certain situations. In this video, I test out whether turning IBIS off actually makes image quality sharper. I'll also be on the hunt for some awesome landscape photos. So the main emphasis of this video is to shoot some landscape photos, but I will be doing this test as I go through the landscape, taking some different shots. So hopefully we can capture something good today. Uh, forecast is looking very promising actually for sunset, but who knows? So yeah, I'll be comparing different shots with Ibis turned off, see if we can draw some conclusions by the end of the video. I'll be experimenting with some different focal lengths and also different shutter speeds as well. So hopefully we can come up with an answer at the end of the video. Let's go and see if we can find our first composition. So I think I found my first area I want to concentrate on this afternoon. This wonderful wild garlic, not quite yet in full bloom, so it might even return if these images are successful. But I've definitely got a shot looking up here, and I think probably one looking back down this way. Where the camera is positioned now, looking back down, I've got these lovely trees here. Sycamores, some beech trees too, really nice. This wild garlic, not in full bloom yet, so definitely might be something I might want to return to in a week or so when it's at its peak. But yeah, I love this winding path up this side of this embankment. We've got the coast just literally through these trees here. You might be able to hear lapping waves, yeah, really nice. So, actually the light's quite diffused right now. It has been really harsh. Actually, it's been hampering my photography all week. High level of cloud, but harsh light coming through it. Anyway, I'm gonna get set up, see if I can find something. Compromise I have with the shot looking this way is the bright sky diagonally cutting through the scene. The eye tends to want to be drawn towards the brightest part of the image, and that is the top left-hand corner, and the path goes to the top right-hand corner. So a bit of a conflicting kind of composition, really. Whether I can bring that down, dodging and burning, and maybe accentuate the pathway with a bit of, you know, maybe a radial filter or something like that, that might work. But yeah, in terms of my focal length and everything, I'm about 20 mil, and I'm having to focus stack, I'm about a meter away from the wild garlic down here on the left, so focus stacking three times through the scene gets everything sharp at f8, which is absolutely fine. Polarizer takes the shine off the leaves, light source is coming right down from my right hand shoulder through the scene, so that helps that, just control the highlights a little bit. Focus on this nearest piece of wild garlic, two second timer is on, ibis is turned off, Focus on the middle part of the scene. And again in the background. Now I should just mention as well, I have bumped my eyes up to 400 so I can get my shutter speed up a little bit. Otherwise I'm seeing too much motion in the foliage and I want to try and freeze as much of that as possible, I think. This shot was taken with the 16 to 55 lens at 18 millimeters. Side by side, both photos look identical when looking at the static parts of the image, such as the pathways and tree trunks. Ah, oh, that was certainly a nice find. Beautiful wild garlic, ferns are just coming out as well. Bluebells, absolutely wonderful. So before we move on and grab another composition, I'm just gonna quickly grab a couple of batteries out of the car for the vlogging camera, because we're nearly out of battery. This uh, portable power station has been great for my 30 day photography projects. It's allowed me to keep my batteries charged on the go when I've pretty much been working out the back of my car. And it's great to have a brew on the go too. So this seamlessly leads us on to a message from today's sponsor, which is Bluetti. This is the Bluetti EB3A portable power station, which has a 260 watt hour capacity and a powerful 600 watt AC pure sine wave inverter with a 1200 watt surge capability, meaning you can power up your essential devices and camera equipment wherever you go. The LifePo 4 battery will give you 2500 plus life cycles to 80%, so you can rely on it for years to come. 
the EB3A also features fast dual charging capabilities, which means you can quickly charge your solar and AC power together. There's different ways to recharge, including AC, solar, car, generator, AC plus solar and AC plus adapter. So no matter where you are or what power source you have available, you can always keep the power station charged and ready to use. So whether you're camping in the great outdoors, preparing for a power outage, or just need a reliable power source on the go, the Bluetti EB3A, I'm getting attacked by bugs, power station, has definitely got you covered. You can get yours today by following the link in the video description. So now we've got the batteries recharged, so to speak, let's go and see if we can find another composition. And a big thanks to Bluetti for sponsoring this week's video. So, what a beautiful scene we've got here in front of us. It's absolutely wonderful. As always, a few compromises have to be made. I've got a barbed wire fence actually on the right hand side, which leads down to a gate, which is my focal point of the image, somewhere for the eye to wander. We've got a pathway through this wild garlic on the left hand side, which is also very, very nice. I framed it so there's no sky in the shop, but we've got a fallen branch in our foreground, which actually cuts right through the sort of straight across the frame, which creates a bit of a barrier, but I'm hoping when the light's a bit more diffused, that log, the branch, won't stand out as much. I've got a few trees on the left which bend over to the right, which do help lean the eye through towards where the gate is. So I think it works, I think it works. It's beautiful anyway, absolutely lovely. I just want to try and get some diffusion because right now that light is so harsh, controlling the contrast is very, very difficult. We've got the white heads of this wild garlic and the deep dark shadows of the underside of these logs so balancing that out is very very tricky at the minute but i'm hoping we're going to get a little bit of diffusion because there is some wispy high cloud coming so fingers crossed that'll help to balance the scene a little bit as before we'll do the test with the ibis turned on turned off i'll let you know my thoughts on that settings wise this time we're at hundredth of a second fa iso 125 35 millimeters fully polarized as well so yeah let's hope this uh, diffusion comes along and we can grab this image <laughs> Again, taken with the 16 to 55 lens, this time at 33 millimeters, zoomed into 100% and to my eye, both images look identical. Now, of course, I'm testing this with my equipment and this may be different to your equipment. So let's open a discussion in the comments section about this. See if we can help other fellow photographers out. Because this channel is all about helping other photographers out with equipment, reviews, techniques, that type of thing. So yeah, let's open a discussion and get something going down there. I read every single comment in the comment section and I get back to as many as I possibly can. And I do feel we're building a really nice community down there as well. It's always great to hear your thoughts, it really is. So guys, thanks for watching, commenting on these videos. You know, it really does mean the world to me. Anyway, let's go see if we can find something else. Oh, it's windy. Can't believe how much windy it is on this side compared to where we were in the woodlands. Hardly a breeze there. Anyway. 60th of a second F10, focusing on these rocks here. Apologies about the wind noise. Quite like the composition, the contrast between the, the wild flowers here, the rocks in the foreground, and this jaggedy cliff edge there. What a leading line through the scene as well, which leads down to the water there, which is lapping around the bottom. Lapping around the bottom. But anyway. I'm at 60 for second F10 ISO 125, focusing just down here on these rocks. The peninsula there looking nice with some yellow lightings on it as well. Turquoise sea, like I mentioned before, lapping waves. And there's a little bit of light just coming onto the scene now. So I'm gonna go grab this one. Two second timer. I'm trying to shield the microphone too. I can actually see my tripod moving. <laughs> So it'll be interesting to see if Ibis makes a big difference to this or not. I think a long exposure is out of the question here. <laughs> the 
The shot was taken with a 16 to 55 lens at 16 millimeters at 250th of a second. Both images look the same. This one is a longer exposure of one second with a six stop ND filter. I can just about see that the shot with the IBIS turned on is a touch sharper. So IBIS doing its job preventing camera shake from the wind. So I wanted to test out the telephoto lens. So I put on the 70 to 300 and shot a couple of photos. This one at 70 millimeters and both images look identical. This one at 300 millimeters though is a touch sharper with the IBIS switched on. At 300 millimeters, micro shake is much more noticeable. So IBIS really helps out here. Well, I've got my position for sunset taken care of. Position myself on top of this dune now. The wind's really dropped actually, and we've got some hopefully nice light that's gonna to start to appear on the horizon there. So basically, composition wise, it's pretty straightforward. Perched on top of this dune, I've got some grass in the foreground, which does actually bend the way I want it to bend. It's the only position that I could find where the, the marum grass actually leads the eye into the scene. Because the prevailing winds from the west, most of the marum grass is pointing the opposite way and it feels awkward. But this position here must just catch the wind this way and it's laying the right way for this to work, I think. It's a bit of a lead in line. There's lots of little pathways throughout these dunes here. And a bit further on, we've got some nice rocks which lead the eye through to the peninsula there. Cloud formations are really nice, actually. And the light's just bursting through in certain points. But what I'm really hoping for is a nice shaft of golden light to light up the marum grasses and add some contrast to these dunes. I'm still waiting for a really good shot from this location. I'm yet to get one. I've got a few that are okay, but I think, you know, some, some fantastic locations here in these grasses, these dunes, that can make some great compositions. I'm at F9, 80th of a second at the minute, but that will change as the light changes. It's just a case of waiting for the right moment to take the shot. For the final shot, I put on the wide angle Viltrox 13mm lens and I could see no difference when inspecting the static parts of the photo, such as the rocks. So I think it's fair to say that with my equipment, there's a strong argument in favour of leaving IBIS switched on when the camera is locked on a tripod. As I can see no degradation in the image quality and it actually helped out to get sharper images in some situations. For longer than a two second exposure though, I would definitely turn it off as any kind of movement will result in a soft image. Please let me and others know in the comments if you've had similar results with your camera gear. So it's been a cracking day. I do hope you've enjoyed it. A big thanks to Bluetti for sponsoring this week's video. Please do go and check out the link in the description if you're interested in their power stations. If you'd like to see more videos like this, there's a link at the top there, which will take you to another one of these landscape photography adventures. But until next week, guys, take care and I'll see you soon.